Hey guys, uh, Nick Grimsman here from The Father's Friends. Uh, hope you are all doing really well tonight. Um, this is uh, another uh, night to pray against the coronavirus and to encourage you in your faith that Jesus Christ is Lord and that the name of Jesus is greater than coronavirus or cancer or any disease or AIDS or anything, right? Coronavirus is, a, or Jesus' name is above coronavirus. That's what I want you to understand. Jesus' name is above depression or economic collapse or anything like that. Jesus' name is above all that. So it doesn't matter what the media tells us. It doesn't matter what you're all seeing on social media. It doesn't really matter. What matters is, is the truth. And the truth says, the Bible says, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And it also says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe with all your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So tonight I urge you to call on the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Call on the name of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Call on his name and accept him as your Lord and Savior if you have not yet. All you got to do is confess Jesus as Lord. And if you believe with all your heart that God raised him from the dead, as you confess Jesus as Lord, you can be saved. So turn to him tonight with your whole heart and repent. Change your mind and turn towards him. Turn towards the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross so that we could live free from sickness, disease, poverty, lack, all those things. Jesus died on the cross for your divine health and for your family to be protected from uh, coronavirus or any sort of sickness or disease, okay? So tonight I want to pray. We're going to pray like I did last night. I'm going to do it again, uh, hopefully tomorrow night and the following night. I'm going to keep praying because the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So I'm with you praying, agreeing. The Bible says we're to agree, touch any one thing that shall be done by our Father in heaven. So I want to encourage you to agree with your spouse, to agree with your family in prayer. Agree with your community in prayer. Agree with people online in prayer that the coronavirus and this whole uh, financial thing and all this stuff is going to be taken care of quickly in the name of Jesus. This is not a time for Christians to be afraid, thinking that you know all this bad stuff's coming to us. We have to hold on to the promises of God. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of good and not of evil. Plans to give you a future and a hope. And so God promises that to his people. God promises that in the time of famine or the time of um, you know, people, uh, you know, a thousand shall fall by our side or 10,000 on our right hand that will not come near us, that no plague will come near our dwelling. So even when all this stuff's going on, God promises that he will be with us to protect us, to encourage us, to comfort us, and to prosper us. So it doesn't matter what the economy is doing. It doesn't matter what the media is saying. It doesn't matter what's going on anywhere except the truth of God's word. So what is the truth of God's word? Jesus Christ is alive. He died on the cross for us. He rose from the dead. And we can pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And he can release angels to help. He can release his presence to help. And he can build us up and encourage us. And so, Lord, we just pray tonight for every single person watching, Lord, that they would feel your presence, Lord, that they would be encouraged. Those suffering from fear and anxiety, and, and uh, maybe they've lost their job or maybe they're laid off, whatever's going on, Lord, we pray that you would release to them a better job in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would protect, Lord, their families. We ask that you would put a wall of fire around our nation, the United States of America, Lord. We agree together, Lord, for the United States of America to have a wall of fire around us, Lord, that the coronavirus is going to be burned out in New York City, that the coronavirus is going to be burned out of Washington State and out of California in every single state. So you can just list your state or if you live in another country, just list it. List your city as I pray. Lord, we declare and decree that coronavirus has no right to the city of Phoenix. This is where I live, the city of Phoenix, and it belongs to the kingdom of God because the Bible says everywhere we step our foot belongs to us. And so if your foot is in a city, you own it. See, I learned that years ago when I was uh, when I was traveling overseas, I was, you know, I was dealing with some fear and stuff about going over to the Middle East and Pakistan and stuff. And I remember the Lord reminding me that everywhere I step my foot is mine. 
because he that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. So you have the Holy Spirit in your body. If you're a born again Christian, if you're a Christian, you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, then you have the Holy Spirit in your body. You need to believe that you have the Holy Spirit and that he goes with you and that you're a king and a priest unto God, that you're a peculiar person, that you are loved by the Father, that no weapon formed against you or your family can ever prosper. So start believing these things instead of listening to lies and fear because fear and anxiety will cause depression and torment. Instead of believing that stuff, believe that you have the love, the peace, and the joy of the Holy Spirit, that you have your identity in Christ, that you have the cross, the blood of the Lamb, you have the angels that watch over, you have the promises of the Father. So in dark times, remember that the light of Christ is inside of you, and you can call on his name anytime, and he will answer you. It's not always instant, though. So as we pray these uh, these videos, these live streams while we're going through the coronavirus thing, we're going to believe that God is going to supernaturally release cures or release vaccines or whatever we need. I don't know if, uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know about all this stuff. I just believe that God, um, you can release different things to people, to doctors, to help medication, all that stuff. So Lord, we pray that you'd release supernatural wisdom to doctors, Lord, all over the world, supernatural wisdom, Lord, to every single doctor and nurse, Lord, first, Lord, uh, wisdom, how to deal with coronavirus, how to deal with the patients, how to get rid of this virus, Lord, supernatural wisdom to the uh, pharmaceutical companies, Lord, anyone that is trying to help, Lord, and not harm us, but somebody that's trying to help out there, we ask that you give them a divine download in the name of Jesus to help the, co the uh, communities of the world, to help the people, Lord, because there's people suffering and there's a lot of people who are afraid. So we ask specifically that you give divine wisdom to doctors and scientists and nurses, Lord, and people on the front lines. We pray for our president, Lord. I pray specifically for Donald Trump and everybody in Congress, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your wall of fire, Lord, would be around them and that the blood of Jesus would cover them, that you'd give them great strength and great wisdom. Lord, that you teach, uh, you'd show them what you want to do with the economy, Lord, how to help these people that can't uh, pay their bills, Lord, and businesses that are getting shut down, Lord. Lord, speak to somebody, Lord, in Trump's circle. Speak to Trump. Speak to the Congress, Democrat, Republican. I don't care. Speak to someone with a great idea. Give them a good idea, a witty invention, something to help, Lord, in this time of need. And so we agree together for our senators and our Congress people and all the judges and everybody everywhere and Trump and his family, everybody, Lord, we pray for our leaders, Lord, tonight. And we ask that, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts, that you would give them wisdom, that you drop some sort of supernatural wisdom into their minds, into their hearts tonight. In Jesus' name, we pray for their salvation, Lord, each one of them, that they would be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and that the blood of Jesus would cover, Lord, the people that are... Um, are in our governments, Lord, trying to help, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you would reveal uh, any sort of wickedness going on, Lord, and that you would uh, raise up righteous leaders, Lord, and that you would fill them with your presence, your spirit, and Lord, that you would help them make good choices uh, in the weeks and months ahead, Lord. And Lord, we pray for the business leaders that they would make uh, you know, the uh, good choices, Lord, that you would lead them and guide them, Lord. And, and Lord, I pray, Lord, for people in their homes tonight. I know that there's people who are afraid Lord, all over the place, Lord, all over the world, Father, and I pray that you would visit each one of them, that the angels would come to their home, Lord, and that you would visit them, Lord, that the presence of God would be in their house, Lord. I release healing into their bodies if they need healing, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, I, I just pray, Lord, that you would heal bodies tonight. If there's anybody that's suffering from a cough or a fever, Lord, and they're afraid, Lord, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We command coronavirus to die right now. We command the coronavirus to leave the world in the name of Jesus. We command the media to stop lying and blowing things out of proportion, Lord. We ask that you would raise up people in the media who are honest, Lord, that are that really care, Lord, to deliver good news, Lord, that uh, proper news, Lord, that's not um, clickbait and things trying to get people to... Uh, just watch a story, Lord, but good people, Lord, in the media. Raise them up, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray for people's jobs tonight, Lord, that you would save their jobs, Lord, if it be your will. Lord, but people who have lost their jobs, Lord, we ask that you would create something new and exciting and wonderful for them. Lord, I believe this is amazing, Lord. This is 
uh, this is an amazing time because this is a time where we can stretch our faith. And a lot of people are going to uh, are going to mature through this time. God is going to mature many people, and while we go through this, you're going to mature, and you're going to you're you're going to see clearly. You're going to see the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, David, King David said, you know, prophetically, he said, you know, I would have lost hope unless I would have believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So that is your word tonight, that you're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord, we thank you. We declare that over our lives tonight. Lord, we declare that we have divine, supernatural health, that every cell in our body is healthy in the name of Jesus. Lord, I loosen the anointing for divine health into every single person's bodies that's watching this. I loosen divine health to our president, to the people of Congress, Lord, to the people, the governors of the, of the states in the name of Jesus, to our community leaders, and especially our doctors, our nurses, our ER uh, staff, Lord, and our police officers, and everybody involved in this, Lord. I pray that you would give them divine health and protection, Lord, from sicknesses and viruses. And Lord, we just declare coronavirus gone from Phoenix, Arizona. That's where I live. I command it to be wiped away right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I agree together with you that your city is going to be wiped clean of coronavirus. New York City will be wiped clean. Let's believe it tonight. If you're in New York, believe with me. New York City, we command coronavirus to be a uh, to be a, a coronavirus free city in the name of Jesus. And we command the uh, from in Washington State. I'm from Washington. I'm from the Seattle area. So Lord, we we declare that Washington State is a corona virus free state in the name of Jesus, Lord. We burn it out of Washington. We command the numbers to level off and go down supernaturally, Lord. Let everybody see these miracles take place. Let everybody see coronavirus start going down as the Christians start praying and declaring that coronavirus will not overtake the world. Coronavirus is under our feet. We have the blood of Jesus and we have the power of the Holy Spirit and we declare that coronavirus is gone in the name of Jesus from the entire planet. The entire planet, Lord, let's believe that tonight, guys. We're to agree touching you. One thing that shall be done by our Father in heaven. Lord, we loosen your angels to minister to every single person dealing with coronavirus. Lord, if they're in the uh, ER or the um, ICU, Lord, I ask that you would speak to them. If they're in different countries that don't have medical care and they're dying somewhere, I ask that you'd release angels, you'd release ministers to help those people. Lord, we ask that you would save them, deliver them. We thank you for doing this, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the book of Job. I'm going to say this every night probably. Remember the book of Job. It was really bad. Job went through horrible things. He couldn't explain it. He lost all his money. He lost all his, I think he lost his children. He lost all his land and he lost all his servants, I think. And then uh, he had boils all over his body. Remember? Job. And then God, what did God do? Double for his trouble, right? I think it was double, right? And so he was blessed double. So we declare that whatever we lose in this in this season, whatever, you know, money or property or jobs, we're going to get double for our trouble plus some because God is faithful to his children in the name of Jesus so instead of looking at the news and going, oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh, I'm so scared. Instead go, hey Lord, this means more dub, a more uh, a double for my trouble. More blessings are coming my way. Because God always works good things from bad things. Remember, good things come out of bad things. Remember that the disciples, think of this, the disciples were walking, or they're walking with Jesus for three and a half years or whatever. So they're walking with Jesus and they think Jesus is going to be the king of Israel. So they're super excited. They didn't know he was going to die and raise from the dead yet, right? So they're, they're walking with him. They're seeing all these miracles. They're super excited. They think he's going to become the king of Israel and take, take back Israel from the Romans. They're super excited. They love Jesus. They're following him. And then what happens? All of a sudden, Jesus gets betrayed by Judas, and then he, he gets crucified. So Peter loves Jesus. He's like, yeah, Jesus, I, I'm your guy. I'll do anything for you, da 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 and then John, all these guys, John loved Jesus. These guys loved Jesus. Mary Magdalene, all these people loved Jesus. And then all of a sudden, what happened? Jesus gets crucified. What happened to the king of Israel? That is the worst. Think about that. That's like the worst thing that could ever happen to those guys. The worst. Because they were believing Jesus was going to take Israel away from the Romans. That he was going to reign as king then in the flesh. And so here they are mourning, right? 
They're mourning for three days, three and a half days. Jesus is in the tomb. They're mourning and crying. Now they're running for their lives because they, the, the religious leaders probably want to kill them too because they were followers of Jesus. So now they're, they're brokenhearted. Their hope is all gone, like completely gone. It's completely dark. And now they have, you know, an eclipse came and everything, right? So now they have the religious, they're scared that they're going to get killed by the religious leaders too. Think of this, hopeless, fearful, afraid for their lives. What are they going to do with their life? Oh my gosh, he was supposed to be the king of Israel. And then what happened? Boom, Jesus resurrected and just appeared. <laughs> And then what? He turned the morning into dancing. Can you imagine those disciples when it looked so dark and so gloomy? They were so afraid. What were they going to do with their lives? They followed Jesus for three and a half years. Oh my gosh, he's dead. Boom, resurrects from the dead. He's like, hey guys, I'm back. Think how amazing that is. So when you're going through dark times like this, and this is dark, guys. This is you know, very, uh, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of different people saying it's going to end here. It's going to keep going, whatever, doomsday, this, doom, whatever. It doesn't matter. God is faithful through dark times. So read the Old Testament. If you, if you deal with fear, read the Old Testament, be encouraged. You know, they had, uh, you know, I think it was Nebuchadnezzar sent the three Hebrew children into the fire. Man, can you imagine that getting thrown into the fiery furnace? Because you wouldn't bow down to the, the, uh, the, the golden statue. These guys were standing there. They were probably really scared. I mean, this furnace was hot. <laughs> They're going to burn to death. And they chose. They said, "We'll just God's going to either deliver us or we're going to we're going to die." You know, and we're good with it. We're going to honor God. And guess what happened? Fourth man in the fire, guys. Jesus showed up. Angel of the Lord. However that works. Think of that. Like at the last moment they got thrown in the fire, Jesus is like, "Hey, what's going on?" So when you're going through really bad times, it's really scary. Think of those three Hebrew children. Think of that. Think of that. Isn't that amazing? Think of uh, King David saying, oh, all this stuff happened to me. Saul ch has chased me. And then, his, then he, he almost lost his kingdom. All this stuff, right? And then all of a sudden, it's like, he's like, I would have lost heart unless I would have believed I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So that's your word. That's what I'm trying to say tonight. The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So encourage yourself like David did in the Lord. So when you see the news, you see all the texts you get with all this, this stuff and all these graphs and all this stuff, just declare with the graph. You know what? I believe the graphs are going to start going down. As Christians pray together, maybe start your own video. Maybe share this video. I don't know. Post a prayer on your Facebook wall about how to be born again. Maybe there's somebody on your Facebook wall that's that go, you know, that's your friend that might see that. They don't know about being born again. They don't know how to confess Jesus as Lord. They never heard it. So maybe post that. Maybe just say, hey, this is my testimony. I want to share it with you. And then have a prayer at the end or or um, you know, or give them our 1 800 number. We're still answering calls here. 1 888 know him. I think it might be backwards right now, but it's 1 888 know him, okay? You can call that number. All right. So think of ways you can reach out to your community. You know, you can post in your neighborhood app. You can say, hey, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm here for anybody who needs prayer, you know, or encouragement, message me or whatever, you know. So there's ways that you can reach out in your community, do a prayer walk. I think we're doing a prayer walk uh, in my neighborhood here. So I think some people are organizing and stuff. So there's, there's, there's different things that you could do right now to encourage people in the love of God because people need hope and the God of hope lives inside your body through the Holy Spirit. So the God of hope lives inside your body. You're not a hopeless, depressed person. Stop believing that. You're not going to be this broke, homeless person on the street. That is not who you're called to be. You could be if you, you know, if something really bad happens or you start listening to weird stuff or whatever, you know, get hooked on drugs. I don't know. But what I'm saying is that you're, that's not your destiny. That's not your calling, okay? Your calling is not to be a homeless person on the streets the rest of your life, okay? So that's not what God's, God's not sitting there going, okay, yeah, this is going to happen to this person and then, yeah, they're just going to be homeless forever. That's not God's divine plan for your life. That's not good plans for your life. God has plans to prosper you to give you hope and a future. And it takes faith. So what is faith? Faith is believing in something before you see it. So this is in trusting God, basically, without seeing anything. So think about this. The coronavirus is, you know, all over the place. People are freaked out, social distancing, all these things, okay? And what do we do as Christians? Do we 
oh yeah, I'm really scared. Everything's gonna be so doom and gloom. Or say, no, coronavirus has nothing on me. The name of Jesus is above coronavirus. The name of Jesus is above economic hard times. The, na the name of Jesus is above fake news and fearful news and all this stuff. The name of Jesus is above every single name. So whatever you're dealing with tonight, just put the name of Jesus above it. If you're dealing with depression, voices, uh, uh, bad dreams, you're dealing with addiction, maybe you're dealing with a bad marriage, or maybe you know you need uh, deliverance in that area, whatever, whatever it is, just the name of Jesus is above every issue in your life. The name of Jesus is above feeling sad and down and depressed, okay? I would encourage you also to maybe start a prayer time with your family. Bring your children in, start praying over them. One thing you can do is you can uh, lay hands on them and, and anoint them with oil, you know, in your house. If you, you know, if you're, you're uh, you know, in your house, they're children and stuff, you can anoint them with oil, pray over them, declare that coronavirus and no sickness or bacteria touches your children ever in the name of Jesus. You can take communion, you can get some bread or some crackers or wine or grape juice, however you do it. Take communion with your family if they'd like to. Don't be religious about it and force them to do it. Maybe if they don't feel like doing it, that's okay. Go do it by yourself with the Lord. It's fine. And um, you can do communion by yourself. You sit in your room or sit in your chair wherever you're at. Get quiet with the Lord. Take the, the, the broken body of Christ, the bread of, the bread of life. And then take the, uh, the, you know, the wine or the grape juice, the blood of Christ. So we do this in remembrance of him. So we're trying to remember, rem always remembering Jesus' broken body for us. So the next time that fear thing comes on, coronavirus, be afraid. I got the broken body of Jesus. I have the blood of the lamb. My sins are forgiven. I am not cursed. I am blessed. And coronavirus is not a blessing. It's a cursing. It's a curse. So we do not receive any sickness or disease. So all diseases and stuff fall under that line, right? Because it's in the world system, in the flesh. So it's, it's in the world system. So it's considered under that curse part, right? Like sin and all that stuff, okay? So that's not part of who you are in the spirit. So no longer, no longer receive any sickness in your life. I do not receive coronavirus. I will not receive coronavirus. I will never be sick of coronavirus. I will not have any disease or sickness in my body ever. And for some reason, if you deal with a, um, you know, if you get a symptom or something like that, take communion, anoint yourself with oil and declare the goodness of God. God can still work something out if you deal with a sickness or if you, if you deal with a mental health issue for a little bit in your life. God can still work it out for the good. Maybe you're supposed to minister to the nurse or maybe you're supposed to minister to somebody at the mental health facility while you're getting treatment. I don't know. God works all things out for the good for those who love him and who are called according to his purposes. Do you love Jesus? Well, he loves you, but you're called according to his purposes. And so all things good and bad will work together for your good. And it's by faith you trust the word, despite what it looks like in the world, no matter what your body's telling you, no matter what your bank tells you, no matter if you lose, lose your job or if you're dealing with mental health issues, you trust God's word through the emotions, okay? Because that's how the enemy works. He works through your mind and your emotions, which is your soul. He does not fight you in the spirit. He fights you in your flesh, in your mind, in your soul. So he he'll he won't he he can't fight you in the spirit because in the spirit you're in Christ. You're seated high above all principalities and powers. Okay, think of that. So you are in spirit. You are seated in Christ, high in the heavenly realms. Okay, you're a king with Christ. However that works, I'm not really sure. But you're a joint heir with Christ. You're an heir to God. Think of how amazing that is. You're a son and daughter of God. So kind of get above coronavirus for a second and be like, hey, I got the Holy Ghost, okay? I'm not saying like be reckless. Follow the CDC guidelines and all that stuff. Your government leaders, they're trying to help the community. So, you know, listen to that stuff. But, you know, don't be careless. But remember, re remember that you're above. You're above. You're seated above with Jesus. Every name that is named is lower than Jesus, okay? So Lord, tonight we, we just thank you so much, Lord. So what I want you to do is agree with me in prayer and I'm just gonna put my hand out there. You can receive the anointing. I just believe the anointing can go right through the airways. Do you believe that? I believe it. So I'm gonna ask the Lord to increase your faith just to fill your, your body with the Holy Spirit of God. If you've never received the Holy Spirit, just. 
take a deep breath and just ask God in the name of Jesus, Father, I just ask you for the Holy Spirit of God in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe God will touch your heart and fill you with his spirit. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Just keep calling him until he answers. That's what I do. <laughs> I just keep calling him and then eventually he answers. Because it says, ask you shall receive, seek you shall find, knock it will be open for you. Ask you shall receive, seek you shall find, knock it will be open for you. Everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. Everyone who knocks it will be open for them. Everyone who asks receives. Think of that. Everyone who asks receives. Lord, I ask you to touch people with your Holy Spirit tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release the fire of God. I release the Holy Spirit of God through the airwaves. I ask that you would touch people's bodies. Lord, that you would deliver them from demons. Lord, that you deliver people from disease. That you'd burn out any coronavirus or any sort of flu or any sickness that somebody may have. I ask that, Lord, that you would fill their body with your Holy Spirit. That they would speak, Lord, uh, you know, in, in uh, their heavenly language, Lord. If they can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that I pray that you'd re release that tonight. Lord, I pray that you would give them a boost of faith. Father, that you give them gifts of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that you give them gifts of miracles, gifts of healings, Lord. Gives them gifts of wisdom, uh, word of wisdom, word of uh, word of knowledge, Lord. That anybody that can receive a gift from the Holy Spirit of God tonight, Lord, I ask that you release that to them in Jesus' name. I pray for a, a spirit of evangelism, Lord, to be released, Lord, that people would start evangelizing, just encouraging and loving their neighbors, Lord, that encouragement would come from their hearts to their communities, Lord, that they wouldn't be the people that shrink back, but they would love fervently, Lord, they would love Christians and they would love their neighbors as themselves, Lord, that they would, Lord, that they'd have great peace, Lord, with their children, Lord, and their family members, Lord, we just command confusion to leave everyone tonight in Jesus name and Lord I ask tonight Lord that you would start lowering the cases of coronavirus as soon as possible in the name of Jesus I pray specifically for the United States of America Lord and you can name your country if you're in another country I pray specifically for the United States of America that the numbers start going down of the cases in the name of Jesus as soon as possible, Lord. And we speak to coronavirus and we command it to leave the United States of America tonight in the name of Jesus, Lord. We believe together. And Lord, we do believe together that coronavirus is not going to affect any one of our family members or anyone we care about. Lord, we thank you for that. We ask that you would cover them in the blood of Jesus, the fire of God, Lord. Lord, we pray for our pastors, Lord. We pray for people that, uh, you know, pastors and, and, and people, leaders, Lord, we pray for them tonight that you would strengthen them. Lord, that they would be encouraged, Lord. And Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that that real Holy Spirit, love-filled preachers would come forth, Lord. Lord, that they would come forth boldly in faith. And Lord, that no weapon formed against them that pro would prosper, Lord. And that, Lord, that you would do something new, Lord, that, that there would be a new, there would be a new, um, just a new thing, Lord, that you do something new in the body of Christ, Lord, that, that love would be our focus, Lord, that love would be our focus, Lord, that love would be our focus, Father. I pray the love of God be poured out tonight, Lord, that every person watching this would feel the love of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would prompt people to, to maybe possibly do their, do, do live streams themselves or videos, Lord, to pray for people. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would you would just really encourage everyone watching this. I pray that, Lord, that if it be your will, that people would share this, Lord, and that other people would be encouraged. And maybe some people would get saved, get filled with the Holy Spirit, be healed. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, Lord, once again, for protecting President Trump, Lord, and Vice President Pence, and uh, the leaders in Congress, Lord, everybody, Lord, in, in the government, Lord, in our state governments, Lord, in our community governments, the police officers, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the Phoenix Police Department. We thank you, Lord, for um, the, the doctors and the nurses. And just, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, that um, you are going to supernaturally do something wonderful. As coronavirus leaves this world, leaves this planet, Lord, you're going to do something wonderful, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that it be speedily quick. ASAP prayer as soon as possible, Lord. We pray for these things to come to pass as soon as possible. And Lord, remember, you said we're to agree touching the one thing that shall be done by our Father in heaven. We ask you, Father, together to eradicate coronavirus supernaturally from planet Earth tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. 
comfort your people, give them, give them faith, give them more, just help them access more of their true self, Lord. Help them access more of who they are in Christ. Help them access more of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, this, I love the presence of the Lord. I could pray all night. Guys, believe with me that coronavirus is going to go away, okay? Just believe with me that this whole thing's going to go away as soon as possible. And we're going to believe that this thing's going to start going down and dwindling and dwindling. You know what? God is so faithful that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. So one person, one person can pray and move things. So remember that when you pray, you can move things in your community. When you pray for your, for your family members, when you pray for someone that's sick, you can pray for them and you can believe with them for God to release healing into their bodies, okay? So it is time for faith. It's not time to shrink back and be uh, fearful, okay? If you're dealing with uh, you know, financial issues, remember the Lord is faithful to always make sure that you have food and clothing. Paul told us, with food and clothing, in this I will be content, okay? It might sound hard to some of you, but that's the truth. With food and clothing, I shall be content. And God says that he will provide everything we need according to his riches and glory, right? Something like that, right? So God will supply everything you need already. Remember, if you need to be encouraged, read some of the stories of the Old Testament. Also, I want to say this. Remember that Jesus said that our Heavenly Father feeds the sparrows. This is very important for you to get, okay? Because we're all, we're all, we all kind of learn different stuff. But I want you to go right to the Bible, and maybe you should read this tonight, okay? I'm going to post it in the comments section, the, the scripture, okay? But it says that, that Father God feeds the sparrows. How much more will he feed and clothe you, right? So he feeds the sparrows that do not, what did he say? So, so they don't uh, give, they don't sow, they don't plant, they don't plant food, or they don't plant in churches, you know, give money or whatever, however that works. And then they don't have barns, they don't have storehouses, so they don't do anything. That I mean, that's basically what he's saying. The sparrows do nothing, and Father God still feeds them. Think of that. The, Jesus wants you to trust Father God. The sparrows, think of the sparrows. They don't toil, they don't plant, and they don't store in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. How much more will he feed you or take care of you, you of little faith? So I'll put that scripture um, down in the comments. I think that's a good scripture for you to meditate on if you're afraid you know, about food or taking care of your family or whatever. Sometimes we just have to get with the Lord and remind him how good he is and how faithful his word is, okay? Remember, the promises of God are like your weapons. The promises of God are your weapons. So you can hold on to them and you keep holding on to them no matter what. So when I had schizophrenia, that's what I did. I held on to um, the promises of God for healing, the promises of God for deliverance, the promises of God for his love and his forgiveness, for no condemnation, for peace, for joy. I held on to those promises and I continue to hold on to the promises. And so that's what I challenge you with is to hold on to the word. The promises of God are yes and in him are amen. So you don't really have to figure out if God wants you healed or to walk in divine health. Look at Jesus. Look at the cross. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, by his wounds, we have been made whole. We have been healed, right? So you don't have to ask, I wonder if God wants me healed. Uh, yeah, Jesus died for you on the cross. He wants you healed. He wants you prosperous. He wants you happy, joyful. And sometimes you have to go through dark times, but he's going to bring you through the tunnel and you're going to be shining bright. So shine your light, shine it bright. Smile. God loves you. Hallelujah. This is Nick Grimson from thefathersfriends.org. You can go to our website. You can give a donation if you'd like. Uh, also, uh, we have a, a ministry in Pakistan. When I was in Pakistan, we had, uh, uh, I went to some remote villages near Afghanistan, the border there. And uh, these people don't have medical care like they do in uh, uh, America and the Western uh, uh, hospitals and stuff. So um, they're very fearful in these villages and stuff. And I care deeply for these individuals. 
and we just sent some money over, but he can't get the money because they just closed all the banks in this area. So we're believing that somehow he can get uh, use the some card that he that the company I send through uh, can give them. It's just weird because it's overseas electronic transfers. But anyway, we're going to pray for Pakistan real quick, and then I have, just have a couple more things I'm going to say. Actually, let's play for pray for Pakistan at the end. Uh, what else? Okay, so I do a mentorship program. If you'd like to be part of my mentorship program, I do a private Facebook page where I, I go in there periodically like every day pretty much and I do teachings and uh, you can actually message me, uh, text message me privately or personally and I can you know message you back if you have questions and things like that. I'll put the in the comments in a little bit. You can sign up for my mentorship program. I really want to help people one-on-one -on -one to help you. And so I think this is good for people to be encouraged to connect. We have a private Facebook group where you can connect with others. It's still small, but I, I want to uh, get some more people in there. So sign up if you feel led to. Okay, I'll put that in the comments. That's my mentorship group. And then also, um, uh, I had to cancel my trip to, uh, to North Africa. I was going to Tunisia. That's canceled. Um, what's the other thing I was going to Oh, we have free videos. I have like 20 plus hours of free videos at our website about believing correctly. And I think it's going to help a lot of people to start, you know, really believing who you are in Christ. Um, because, you, you know, you really want to know who you are and what Christ did for you at the cross 2,000 years ago. And how the Holy Spirit is, is working in your life right now, even if you don't feel him doing it. He's working in you. Um, and so I'm going to put that, the, video, the free videos in the comments below. And my book, Defeating Mental Illness, you can get it. Um, that's about it. But uh, let's pray for Pakistan. Um, my friend Ravi is in Pakistan. So, Lord, we just uh, lift up Pakistan. I love the Pakistani Christians. Lord, they're so poor. Lord, um, and, and they um, they really love you, Lord. And they go through so much persecution. And now they have to go through all this, uh, this coronavirus stuff, Lord. So we just agree together tonight, Lord, that coronavirus, it will not touch anyone in uh, the area. Uh, where I ministered at. Lord, I, I specifically ask that you'd release your angels to stand guard over the villages, Lord, uh, where I, I met those precious individuals. And Lord, that you would um, you would cover Ravi and his family with the blood of Jesus. And Lord, I agree with my friends tonight for something great to happen in Pakistan, Lord. Uh, with the ministry we have there, Lord, with Christianity in Pakistan, we pray for a major revival of your, of uh, of your Spirit, Lord. Miracles, signs, and wonders, the gospel going forth, and Lord, we we just thank you for blessing Ravi, Lord, giving him enough food so he can he can get food for his family. Thank you for getting him, giving him the money we sent, Lord, and thank you for the people that support the ministry, Lord, so we can send him more money to help these poor uh, Christians, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I, I just bless Pakistan, and we command coronavirus to leave Pakistan and specifically Ravi's uh, region. We command coronavirus to leave that region right now in Jesus name. You're not allowed to be there coronavirus. You hear me? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just speak great to coronavirus. Leave in the name of Jesus. You can't be here anymore. Amen, guys. So I'm going to do this every night until this thing's gone. And then one day we can look back and go, wow, that was great. We prayed together and we believe that coronavirus is going to start going down. So guys, we're going to start believing that this thing's going to start going down. I don't know when. Hopefully it's right this moment, but it could be next week. It could be next year. I don't know. But God heard our prayers. And the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availed much. So believe that God hears your prayers. Amen? All right. I think that's it. Uh, thefathersfriends.org. I'll put it all in the comments. Check out the comments section. Thank you for your support of the ministry. Amen. Bye, guys.